All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Brought to you by Small Cases. Invest in ready-made portfolios created by professionals. Good morning. You're listening to the Daily Morning Update from Bloomberg Quint and I'm Alex Matthew. Today is the 31st of October. I'll start with the top international news first. Most people had called this in the run-up to the Federal Reserve's policy meet. The Fed last night reduced interest rates by 25 basis points for the third time this year, but also signalled a pause in further cuts unless the economic outlook changes materially. Chairman Jerome Powell said the Fed believes that monetary policy is in a good place and gave equity bulls something to cheer about when he said that there wouldn't be any rate hikes unless there was a dramatic change in inflation. The Federal Open Market Committee altered language in its statement following the two-day meeting, dropping its pledge to act as appropriate to sustain the expansion while adding a promise to monitor data. They cited the implications of global developments in deciding to lower the target range for the central bank's benchmark rate to 1.5 to 1.75 percent. Back home, it seems that banks and non-bank lenders are increasing their focus on higher-risk borrowers as they try to maintain growth rates amid a slowing economy and weakening consumption. A study by credit bureau TransUnion Sybil has showed an increase in the proportion of personal loans and credit cards given to customers with lower credit scores. This shift partly has helped to keep growth rates in the credit card and personal loan segment high, even as growth in secured retail loan categories such as auto loans and home loans fell. Outstanding consumer loans across all major credit products grew 17.1% year-on-year in the quarter ended June, compared with 23.5% a year earlier. In the telecom space, Reliance Geo Infocom has come out and criticized a letter by industry lobby Cellular Operators Association of India, which urged the government panel to suggest relief measures for the sector within two months. In a strongly worded statement, the company said, and I quote, We take strong umbrage at the COAI exploiting legitimate payout obligations to create an alarmist propaganda for the doom of the telecom sector in the country. The government is planning to open 100 additional airports by 2024 as part of a plan to revive economic growth, according to a Bloomberg report. The proposal, which includes starting 1,000 new routes connecting smaller towns and villages, was discussed at a meeting last week to review infrastructure needed by 2025. Steps to start a plain lease financing business in the country was also discussed. In more international news, there seem to be multiple snags in the phase one of the US-China trade deal that was met with so much enthusiasm only recently. It was meant to be signed by Presidents Donald Trump and Xi Jinping at an APEC summit in Chile. But Chile just cancelled that summit because of the ongoing social unrest at Santiago. The announcement of the cancellation appeared to catch the White House off guard, but the administration insists it would continue to press on in finalising the agreement in coming weeks. Meanwhile, the U.S. economy expanded more than forecast in the third quarter of the year, aided by consumption. Cooling fears of a more pervasive slowdown tied to weakening business investment and faltering exports. Gross domestic product increased at a 1.9% annualized rate, according to Commerce Department data. Forecasts in a Bloomberg poll had pegged the number at 1.6%. The higher-than-expected growth and the Fed's rate decision pushed U.S. equities higher. The S&P 500 and the Nasdaq both climbed a third of 1%, while the Dow climbed 0.4%. Two of the three early rises in Asia were also trading positive last I checked. And with that, it's over to Darshan Mehta for the trade setup for the day in India. Good morning, Darshan. How are we looking today? 
Hi Alex, good morning, good morning everyone. Global queues are rather strong at this point of time. Asia is doing well, the SCX Nifty is also indicating a positive outlook. But uh, in the midst of the earnings season, Indian Oil Corporation is the Nifty earning that will come out today. Among the other earnings, there is Mannapuram Finance, Pandana Spurti, uh, BF Utilities, uh, Blue Dart Express, Tanlakshmi Bank, Garden Reach Shipbuilders, Jindal Saw, Loras Labs, Syndicate Bank, Tirumalai Chemicals and Tube Investment to name a few. In terms of results announced after market hours yesterday, Container Corp results were in line with estimates. There was this exceptional loss that the company faced due to the discontinuation of the export in incentives. The volume decline was offset by stable margins and the realization growth. The volume growth was down 2% as exim volumes remain subdued. The guidance that they had given for the full year was 10 to 12% growth. So it will be interesting to see what the management says in the conference call. Tata Global Beverages results were in line with estimates. The profit was impacted by lower other income, which was down 64%. The India tea business volume growth and value growth was 8%, which was the key positive. Plantation and instant coffee business showed strong growth. The international coffee and tea business was rather weak. Cost rationalization measures and in AS impacted and aided the margins. And the merger of the consumer product business of Tata Chemicals is on track as per the management. Strong numbers from Credit Access Grameen. The NII was up 20 23%. A net profit was up 37%. The asset quality was stable. The loan portfolio grow- was up almost 36%. JK Tires, the net profit jumped on the back of a deferred tax reversal. The margins were aided by lower other expenses and lower raw material cost because raw materials as a percentage of sales fell into 58% from 63%. Quest Corp, the revenues were up 27%, profit was down 2%, the EBITDA was up 44%, so decent set of numbers. The high finance cost and depreciation cost impacted the profits of the company. Cognizant also came out with its numbers, the results were in line with estimates and the company raised its lower end of the guidance. Watch out for some of the IT stocks in India which may react. Among the other stocks to watch, SBI held an analyst meet. The management has guided for a strong second half in the analyst meet. The management is confident of sustained improvement in core operating performance. It sees improved asset quality given the balance sheet strength. Focus on credit quality is impacting growth and the focus will now be on the subsidiaries. Uh, For one, SBI Card's IPO will be the key focus and catalyst. And among the ROA, they plan to lift its ROA to 1% in FY21, mainly by credit cost and improving of operating profit. Reliance Industries is in focus. Reliance Geo has objected to Telco seeking relief from DOT after the AGR uh, judgment. HDFC has been allotted 9.9% stake in Bandhan Bank post the merger of Graha Finance and Bandhan Bank. Intellect Design Arena signed a multi-million deal with UK's Commonwealth Trade Bank for Digital Solutions. And yesterday, the big block deal that happened in HDFC Life Insurance, in which the promoter sold in 10 crore shares, out of which Capital has acquired 5 crore shares. But there's much more you need to know before trade actually starts. For that, log on to our website, bloomberquin.com and click on the All You Need to Know tab and you will be prepared for morning trade. Thanks, Sashan. Well, that's all we have for you in this podcast. But as always, there's a lot more on the website, BloombergQuinn.com. So don't forget to check it out. This is Alex Matthews signing off. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed listening to All You Need to Know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Shiladiti Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy.